Hello, everybody. It's Scott Bunce, and today I'm here with Michael Alasso, and he has been a speaker at uh, one of my Vistage meetings, and I was really impressed because he blends acting and how to communicate with people in, in a great style. So, Michael, can you introduce yourself and, and your talents and what you're all about? Hey, I'm Michael Alasso. I've got lots to say. I'm here to make you you on your best day. You only have to listen to me once because I am here with the great Scott Buns. <laughs> hey, Scott, thanks for asking. Uh, look where I am, first of all. I am here on the southern coast of Maine where the white caps are bouncing. So I am blessed every morning to look out the morning. I see sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean and I am loaded with gratitude every day. And uh, that pretty much is who I am and what I do. I, my background, as you said, Scott, is in show business. I started my career as a high school drama teacher. Then I went back and got my master's of fine arts, which is a terminal degree in professional theater in directing. So I went out in the world and I directed, choreographed, acted, both theater and films. And it was in that capacity that executives kind of found me. I believe with my whole heart and soul, if you're excellent at something, people will figure you out and they'll, they'll tell you what they need. And that's what happened. Business people, lawyers, politicians, they'd see me do speeches on stage or I'd do a corporate show and they'd say, can I have a piece of that? And that's how I started. And one of the people I was coaching one-on-one -on -one hired me to go to his tech meeting, mm -hmm. which was something I had never heard of before. And I, I questioned myself, why do you want me to go to a tech meeting? I don't know anything about technical things. And he said, no, you dummy, the executive committee, which is what Vistage used to be called back in the day. So I went with my trusty notebook, you know, taking notes, and they were about to process an issue, Scott, and the chair said, all right, you've got to leave now. And I started to leave, and he said, took a lot of notes. Can you share some of those notes with us? And I said, well, my notes for my client are confidential, no. And he said, no, I saw you taking notes about everybody's spill. So I shared my notes. And Scott, I don't remember whether it was that day or the next morning, the chair called me, and he said, I want you to be a speaker. I wasn't a speaker. This was fall 2003. He said, and I'm going to hire you to speak to my two groups in January. You're going to be my leadoff hitter. Oh. He sent me the paperwork. I created You on Your Best Day, the 35 secret weapons to help you be you on your best day. That in like in a 24 hour period, I spoke to his two groups in January. He went on Chairnet, gossip columned with all your buddies. And that March, uh, someone in Rhode Island picked me up. He had a cancellation. I drove down a nice storm. He went on Charonet, you know, over 3,000 Vistage talks later and thousands and thousands of clients and friends that I've met as a result of Vistage. Here I am. That's how the whole been, thing started. I know you've been voted top speaker in all of Vistage on a few occasions. So, yeah, just again, lucky to have you. Uh, tell us more about your book and some of the principles. So you and your best day, I believe that we are performing every day. As long as you understand that performance is a small p. So, Scott, if I asked you, what are some of the skills you associate with actors at the top of their game? What, what would you say a skill is that an actor needs? You I, go to a play, you go to a film, what do actor, they do well? I think an actor needs to know how to react uh, in situations, right? So if somebody puts something out there, an actor needs to, you know, the best actors need to react to that in a way that's very credible and believable. All right. So you said three things in your one very pithy paragraph there, which is your trademark. You say a lot with a few words. So you said three things for me. Listening, observation skills, and authenticity. So those are three things I would put on a list. Scott, if I were making a list of skills and talents you need and the CEOs you work with need, which of those three things would you cross off the list? because you have no need for them whatsoever in what you do every day. I, I need all three. That's my point, brother. So what, what you and your best day is, is I take the, the skills and talents you associate with actors and I translate those to being leaders 
both in the workplace and in the home. I call it Act One and Act Two. So Act One is our business life, Scott, and Act Two is where I am right now when I walk in the door and I come home. And I don't know about any play you've ever seen or directed, but any play I've ever seen or directed, Act Two is more important than Act One. So the same energy and commitment that I give to you in this meeting, I have to give Peggy, the kids, my family when I get home. And so you and your best day is a program to help us to be excellent all the time. Yeah, we have to have times out, but those are called intermissions. The rest of the time we're on. You can't take an intermission when you walk in the door after a long, hard day at work because you have a family that's there looking forward to seeing you. That's oh, not intermission. Oh, I'm, I'm tired when I get home. Oh, yeah, I understand. And, and so what I suggest is you take an intermission, brother. So, you know, and that this really became to the forefront, Scott, during COVID. So in New England, you know, we took COVID seriously. I was locked down for 59 weeks. So when I'm on the road, you know, it's so easy because, you know, I finish uh, your, uh, your group. And then I go to Starbucks, I go shopping, I do whatever I want, go to the Capitol building, and I call Peggy when I'm good and ready. At home, right, to, right now, I finish this meeting with you, and there she is. Mm. No intermission. So at home, and if you're working in your hometown and not on the road every day, you got to figure out where the intermissions are. And it's during the intermission that you fortify so do you need to ride around the block two times? Do you need to hang a poster in your garage that says, act two, it's showtime. And when you're driving that car in the garage and the door goes up and you're still on a business call and your eyes are getting heavy, you see that, finish the call, take a breath and walk in. Mm. Take the intermissions, but they have to be intentional. I believe that in order to be 100% authentic, that great word you gave me, you have to be 100% intentional. And what I help executives do is choose the behavior that they want to create to be their best authentic self. Yeah, I think when I think of transitioning from work to home, uh, I don't know if I've I've really thought much about the intentional break before I get out of the car and and enter on the stage of home, if you will. And I think that's a, an important topic. Right there, how do how do you how do you make that transition intentionally as opposed to accidentally? Because right on the money, and it's a combination of lots of these thirty-five secret weapons. Number one, it's energy. Number two, it's focus and concentration, getting in the zone. Secret weapon number four, I call eye contact, which is an example of micro messaging. So it's all the micro messaging we choose to do. It's the preppy, nice green sweater that you have on today, and the nice collared shirt. It's that you smile and nod when I speak. All those are micro messages. So if we're intentional about choosing the micro messages to be our best authentic self, the problem is, Scott, is like, you ever call someone up for their behavior and they say something like, well, I'm just being myself. Yes. And they're being arrogant, disrespectful, discourteous. See, if you tell me your life partner is the most important person on God's earth, and when you walk in the door at the end of the day, you're on a business call, and then you check your emails, and then you open your snail mail, and then you get a snack. And 45 minutes later, you seek out your life partner to see how they're doing. I'm telling you either, A, you're lying about who your authentic self is, or B, with intentionality, you must choose the micro messages that connote your authentic self. A lot of what we talk about in theater is the word objective, which we use in business as well. In theater, which is Secret Weapon 16, we say objective is our desired result, our takeaway. So I feel that if I choose my objective intentional, I say my objective today is to heap Scott with goodies so he can make an informed decision about whether he and I are good collaborators. If I intentionally decide that ahead of time, then that tells me all the behavior I need to do in this meeting. My intention is to get you off the camera so I can get to do other things today. Well, that's a different meeting. If Is your objective to have dinner with your family to get through as many messages as possible on your phone before dinner finishes? Or is your objective to connect the family in a new way 
so that we appreciate and respect each other more by the end of the dinner. And it's not that I'm prescribing one over the other. You have to choose. You have to decide. And then I'll help you go after it. And that's what I do. So I coach executives one-on-one. I do workshops. I do keynotes. All with that core that I want to make people better. In order to do that, people have to decide who they are. And that's why I call it you on your best day. Not you on Scott's best day. Not you on Michael's best day. It's you on your best day. You know, it, it, it does seem like there's a parallel, right? Uh, even at work, if, if people are head down in their technology and they're in a meeting, they're not focused, they're not paying attention, it's, it's disrespectful, and it just mirrors that in home life as well, if you can't put the technology aside and, and give some focus. Exactly right. You have to, again, it goes back to objective. If your objective as an IT person is to get all the IT done as fast as you can by five o'clock. Well, then you are being successful. If your objective is to make the people who work in your company use IT in an effective way so that business is done expeditiously and joyously, well, that's a whole other different set of interactions. You have to decide. That's not for me to decide. That's for you to decide. And so I believe what I'm giving folks the opportunity to do is to decide who they are and then giving them tools of how they can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned, did you say 36 lessons? 35 secret weapons to help you be you in your best I'm way off base there, but (laughs) can you share a few more? Sure. So we talked about secret weapon number one, energy. Two, focus and concentration being in the moment. Secret weapon four, eye contact, which is an example of many of the micro messages we choose to connect with people. Secret Weapon 16, playing a strong objective. Secret Weapon 17, choosing tactics to win your objective. So what happens with a lot of people is their objective is to make their team better. So their only tactic, they become monotactical, is to disseminate information. Well, no, we have to find, we have to diversify our tactical portfolio. So another tactic might be to call them by name. Another tactic might be to cite when they're excellent so you coach them for their strengths, so they repeat those strengths. Another tactic might be to share a story of your struggles so they can identify. Another tactic might be to know what their kids' names are and know when their kids' birthdays are so Mm -hmm. they know you appreciate and love them more than just as a generic employee. So secret weapon number 17 is tactics. Secret weapon 18, obstacles. What prevents me from being excellent? Uh, It's too warm in this room today. I have a sore throat bothering me to talk to you. You're not giving me the responses I need. You're not nodding anymore. You're not smiling anymore. So obstacles, secret weapon 18, come in three places, from ourselves, from our audience, and God's universe, all the things that happen. And so what secret weapon 18 is about is how you turn those obstacles into opportunities. So If I think you're stoic and not interested, I have to mix up my tactics. Maybe I need to be funny and use secret weapon number nine, humor. Scott, what's been funny about the last several years? There's just been nothing funny anymore. So what I discovered somewhere in 2020 was I need to be a roller skating monkey. I, I need to be funny. Do you know the first Vistage group I did in the, in the new virtual world where I didn't know anybody was a group in Philadelphia, and you know how they are. <laughs> so we're all getting on the screen, and the first person to unmute was the CEO, those Eagles. You know, they beat my Patriots one time too many. So they're all, we're all getting on the screen. First person to unmute, the CEO, she unmutes. She leans toward the camera, and she says, I hope this isn't going to be about coronavirus the whole time. And then she muted. So what was she saying to me, Scott? Roller skate, monkey, perform, entertain me. And boy, did she give me a wonderful gift. She slapped me in the face. She said, you know, God gave you these gifts. You're an improviser. You're an entertainer. You do improv. And you're a coach, a keynoter workshop leader, and you've had tons of experience before the camera, 
directing for the camera, acting for the camera, cranking out videos. It's like God took all your gifts, put in a package, tied a bow on it and said, here, go, do. She was so helpful to me. It was a huge gift. So ever since then, I've realized, no, these have to be entertainment pieces in order for the information to get in there. So that's called a combination of two secret weapons, 17, tactical variety, and nine, humor. Whereas you kind of make people laugh. So more examples, secret weapon 19, body language. What do you do with your body? And so a lot of people, in, especially in these rectangles, they don't know how to use their body. And the same in person. So what I'm doing now is I'm bringing my hands to my corazón, to my heart. We call this the power center. What are the messages we're sending with our body? Secret weapon 20, how you talk. Not what you say, but how you talk. Tone of voice. Are you sarcastic? Are you condescending? See, I could say, good morning, Scott. How are you? And that's nice, isn't it? Watch what happens when I add tone of voice. Good morning, Scott. How are you? Ooh. Whoa, suddenly those two simple sentences have a lot of different meaning. And that's secret weapon 20, how you talk. Uh, secret weapon number 25, using names. You know, it's interesting, Scott, what I found in those 59 weeks I was locked down is that the thing, when I asked people what their biggest takeaway was after they met with me, weirdly, the thing I got a lot of and still am is I felt seen and heard today. Mm. Now, Scott, the first time I heard that, I said, really? That's the best you could say about me, that I have eyes and ears? But when I asked my buddy, Scott Bunce, what are some of the things you associate with actors at the top of their game? First two things you said were listening and observation skills. Because what does that imply, Scott? It implies in general that in the workplace, many of us feel unseen and unheard. So the th of the 35 secret weapons, the three I've trademarked are secret weapons five, six, and seven. Truth, specificity, and positive thinking. T, truth, S, specificity, positive thinking, P. And TSP with a period after it in any recipe is teaspoon. So I believe we as leaders, as parents, as life partners, need to nurture and feed the people who come to us for criticism with that very criticism that we give them on a daily basis. And I believe it needs to be truthful, specific, and positive. So what I train people to do by modeling starting, how do you give that feedback so that you make them better? I believe we need to coach more for strengths and less for weaknesses. I think we're trained as leaders to coach for weaknesses. Oh, you're doing that wrong. Nope, that, that's not the way you do it. I think that's our gut. So I know we do that already. Uh, no one needs my help for that. People do need my help for coaching for strengths. I call it beauty gathering. How do you go out in the world, gather the beauty you see, report that beauty so that people repeat it with more intentionality? Well, what, which lesson was it where you got on and you, you made a rhyme with my name? Because you, you drew me right in by rhyming with my name and, and uh, launching right, right from there. <laughs> Well, uh, that, what a brilliant question. See, that's, that's why you're so good. See, you're doing secret weapon number 22, ask questions. See, what a lot of leaders do, uh, a lot of parents do, is we do a lot of declarative statements and a lot of imperatives. This is the way things are done in our business. These are our core values. Uh, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Uh, don't plug that in over there. It's a safety hazard. What great leaders do is they ask questions. If I gave you the opportunity to do that over again, what would you do? Look at your good one. Which of the secret weapons were you doing when you rhymed my name? <laughs> so wonderful. I love that. Look, look at your strength. I was doing a combo platter. I'm hungry. Combo platter time. So 25 using your name. I recognize you as a distinct individual in God's universe. I'm not with a generic leader here. And this is my stock interview that I do. And I'm, uh-uh. I make it about you. Mm -hmm. So 25 use names. It is secret weapon 17. I'm using a tactic 
to win my objective, to fill you with the goodies of you and your best day so you can spread the good news and share it and help me to make people better in the world. And ultimately for me, everything's secret weapon number 35. So the last of the secret weapons, Scott, is that people should be better off as a result of having spent time with you. So in theater, we call that the super objective. So I always have an objective in a meeting. My super objective is what I want on my gravestone, and that's mine. I want every single human being I meet to be better because they met me. And so a lot of the choices I make in any given meeting is about how I do that. I want to make Scott better because he met with me today. Wow, that is, those, are, those are some great lessons. Now, I don't know if I'm going to remember all 35 of your lessons. So why don't we do this? We're, we're starting to run short on time. Uh, tell us, how does somebody get your book or get you to come in person, speak to them? How, how do they get a hold of you, Michael? God bless you, Scott. Thank you. You're my pimp. So <laughs> Scott Bunce, the pimp. Yes, sir. Uh, MichaelAlasso.com is my website. It has all the answers that, and it has all the 35 secret weapons. So you could watch a video. I do a morning podcast that lasts about 30 seconds. So a lot of people subscribe to my morning podcast, which is me saying the date and what happened on this date in history and making people put a little more giddy up in their morning step. So people hire me to do one of three things, typically coach them one-on-one, -on -one, do a workshop or do a keynote speech. And of course, there are subsets of all of those. And some companies hire me to do all three. So michaelosso.com is the way to get a hold of me or LinkedIn. So I have a gigantic staff of four people. <laughs> and those four people, uh, they maintain my social media so much better than I could ever do, Scott. It's like Sarah, my executive assistant, she's on my LinkedIn immediately. So if you link in with me and ask a question, she's on it like that day. Uh, Wendy Gilbert is my all things digital. So she's got my Facebook, my Insta, my TikTok. And working with her is Brandon. Brandon is my newest employee. I had, I said, I've got to hire a token male. All three of my people are women. So I hired this token male. He's kick ass. He's this wonder boy. He's this young dad of three kids. And he just, he, he lives, eats, breathes Instagram, TikTok, which are as a boomer, those are like so foreign to me. So he encourages me to create content every day and he puts it on those sites. So I'm reachable by all those sites as well. All of those sites have a way of communicating with me immediately so that my team gives you an immediate answer so that we can engage in these activities. But that's what I'm, I'm hired to do these days. Go in and do a keynote, whether it be the company's annual meeting and association, a workshop, either for a half day, a full day, two days, I go in and work with the company intimately, small group, big group, doesn't matter, or one-on-one -on -one coaching. They do a three-month contract, six-month contract. We meet twice a month on the camera. Some people hire me because they've got a big presentation and they want to concentrate that. And I coach them. I become a director, coach them on the presentation. And the coolest thing I do, Scott, is I do a retreat up here on the coast of Maine twice a year. So this year it's in June and September where I take a very small group of people and for two and a half days, I immerse them in a very safe environment in improv, going outside their box to heighten their self-awareness and leadership. It's the most fun that I have. And it is the most demanding where people have the highest takeaway because they're not only getting feedback from me, but the other people that are there. And last year, two companies brought four of their people so that they had a large presence because they wanted to build their team with one another as well. So there's some of the ways to kick in with me. Well, Michael, I'm, I'm sure they're getting a lot out of that, just like I did today. Uh, I'm happy to be your pimp anytime, my friend. And uh, again, thanks for spending some time with me and uh, best of luck. God bless you, brother. I appreciate you.